really questions whether or not it's harmful to your body. I think we're just so young that we just kind of just trust the doctors. The back pain became, became very, very severe. It got very, very depressing having to be in a wheelchair in the fifth grade. There are nearly 24,000 reports of adverse reactions filed with the FDA. More than half are deemed serious cases. Now, a 23-year-old woman who is taking legal action against an NHS gender clinic says she should have been challenged more by medical staff over her decision to transition to a male as a teenager. Her lawyers will argue children cannot give informed consent to treatment, delaying puberty or helping them to transition. When I was 16, I started on puberty blockers and I was on that for a year. Um, and I continued with it for an extra year along with cross-sex hormones. I felt angry that, you know, no one was there to really um, say any different and I was allowed to run with this idea that I had or, you know, almost like a fantasy has affected me in the long run as, as an adult. You know, I'm, I'm very young. I've only just kind of stepped into adulthood and I have to, you know, deal with this kind of burden. <laughs> The puberty blockers are given to a child at the age they would normally begin puberty, at say 11 or 12, to prevent them from going through the normal process that all their peers are going through. Puberty blockers are drugs that specifically short circuit the pituitary signaling to the ovaries or the testicles, essentially stopping the physiology of puberty, which is a very necessary part of human development. What we know about puberty is that the hormones of puberty are very necessary for brain development, that the hormones of puberty are very necessary for bone development, and obviously the physical development of the child. 15 months on hormone blockers. Yep, oh, that's how long I have been on blockers. In medical terms, they haven't really been around for that long. The only thing that they do know for definitely is that they stop puberty and that your bones go a bit weird, hence why you might have a few bone density tests. The NHS know absolutely nothing about blockers. It's such a serious process to go down and it's so experimental because you know, doctors don't even know, you know, the outcomes of a lot of these uh, treatments that are given out. We really have no long-term data in, in using this intervention in children. Uh, what we do have are short-term studies uh, that have very serious weaknesses uh, and limitations. Puberty blockers are an open experiment without any controls and any assessment of what this will do to the child 10, 20, and 30 years from now. They are just going ahead because they believe, it's their belief, not the science, that this is the right thing to do for a transgender child. A child, a pre-adolescent child, is making the diagnosis, and there's nothing that I can do to prove or disprove it. There is no other medical condition that I know of where a child gets to, to dictate their medical treatment based on their personal opinion. There, there just is not. It is incredibly unethical to expect that a teenager or younger has the cognitive ability to consent to drugs and procedures that could wipe out their fertility and put them at risk for deadly diseases in the long term. This is a massive social and medical experiment that is completely unregulated and it's also not fully consented. This is a massive breach of medical ethics. You can be a girl that wants to be a boy or a boy that wants to be a girl, but for me, I'm a boy that wants to be a girl and I'm not comfortable in the boy body. I just wanted to become a boy, wait, a girl. Um. This is 16-year-old Jake and 21-year-old uh, Angelica. They both say that they were born in the wrong body. Angelica spent 15 years living here in New York as a boy. I was born, you know, in a body that I shouldn't have been born into. This is Jake. For 14 years, he was raised as a girl named Julia. You know, I was born a girl, but I'm a boy. You're born in the wrong body. When I was like seven, maybe, I went up to my mom and I said, hey, mom, I'm a boy in a girl's body. I've got over 35 years in the medical field now. And I've never been to a lecture or read a textbook or read a scientific paper that presented the human person as a spirit being that may or may not be occupying the right body. 
That's superstitious thinking. No amount of uh, medication, hormones, or mutilating surgery can change your sex. It's in your DNA at conception, sealed. So telling children that we can do this for you is a horrible lie. The lie that you can be trapped in the wrong body, we can change you into the sex you want to be, claiming that we're gonna do that by um, temporarily chemically castrating them with puberty blockers, sterilizing them with the cross-sex hormones, and then mutilating healthy body parts, that's institutionalized child abuse. It's expected that the outcome is, is to result in, in lifelong sterility. Um, so you're taking away a child's fertility at an age when they really don't have an understanding of what they're giving up. Puberty is a very important time for accruing bone density and that if that, that is interrupted, um, the, the children are going to be at risk of, of uh, osteoporosis and, and fractures later in life. And the question that needs to be asked is, uh, if this turns out not to be a good approach, how many children are going to be harmed? The Lupron package insert, the primary puberty blocker, which says right on it under adverse you know, reactions, um, worsen depression, rare cases they say of increased suicidality and suicide attempts. How young are these being given? It could be as young as eight or nine years old. Emotional lability, mood changes, headaches, nervousness, anxiety, agitation, confusion, delusions, insomnia, depression. It even says monitor for development or worsening of psychiatric symptoms. Use with caution in patients with a history of psychiatric illness. Does that sound safe to you? Individuals in whom puberty is delayed multiple years are likely to suffer negative psychosocial and self-confident effects as they stand on the sidelines while their peers undergo pubertal changes. If you block a kid's puberty and for three, four years, he remains like looking like a child and feeling like a child while his peers are into a whole different phase. And within a year or so, they're falling behind their peers. They're not growing skeletally. They're not maturing intellectually. And now they can look at themselves and go, wow, I really don't look like everybody else. There is something wrong with my body. There was a case that was made public recently of um, a young biological man who went on puberty blockers quite young, um, before age 12, and then went right on to estrogen. He got to age 17, and now that he has chemically transitioned, quote unquote, to a woman, um, the next step would be surgery to remove the penis and construct something that looks like a vaginal pouch. But the surgeon told him his penis is too small. He doesn't have enough skin to construct a vaginal pouch. My concern is that we're just now getting these children who have been on puberty delaying hormones and the penis never has a chance to grow. She's one of the first to have undergone complete pubertal suppression and lack of growth of the skin and other tissues which we rely on as surgeons to do this operation. I feel like I've already lost the aesthetics, you know, hopefully after this revision it'll look good once it heals, but if I lose some of my sensation and nerve endings, I might never experience an orgasm. And after one year on puberty blockers, there were a lot of things that the children got worse in several respects. So. Uh, the most disturbing aspect of that was that the children reported a higher level of self-harm. And that, to me, raises a, 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 very, uh, a very big red, red flag. You take a normal child and you give them a drug that prevents a normal process. You have just diseased that child. You are arresting their bone growth. You are stopping them from developing secondary sex characteristics you're arresting their brain development. I think depression kind of kicked in a bit more because I, I was without any hormones in my body and, you know, especially at such a young age when it's supposed to be, you know, at its peak almost, that's, um, yeah, very detrimental. This was a victory for Kira Bell, who as a teenager was prescribed puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. I'm delighted at the judgment of the court today. It was a judgment that will protect vulnerable people. I wish it had been made for me before I embarked on the devastating experiment of puberty blockers. Anyone claiming they're, they're completely reversible doesn't seem to have the data. 
In fact, control studies have not been done about how completely this is true and when they are used to prevent puberty from occurring at its natural time. Because hormones associated with puberty are well known to affect the development of the brain as well as the body. They'll say it's buying time, it's completely reversible. That's a lie. The child and the parents are being encouraged to believe that if they take the next step, the anxiety and the, uh, and the sorrow and the woundedness is going to go away. So they start with puberty blockade and transitioning. There's a lot of excitement, but you haven't addressed the problem. So, so it's time to go to the next step. We're going to go to cross-sex hormones. You give somebody cross-sex hormones, they'll feel like a giant for a while. And you think, oh, I've done them a great good. It's a passing thing. And so the anxiety is still there. And then they'll progress. Well, so really what we need to do next is surgery. In the studies that have been done so far, 100% of the children placed on puberty blockers went on to use cross-sex hormones. Defenders of this protocol call it a pause button. And what it actually is is a fast-forward button towards a gender transition because um, we haven't seen in the medical literature children actually going off puberty blockers once they've started them for gender dysphoria. It leaves you years down the road with a person who has been in, wounded in their heart, who you've done all the, this, this, these things to their bodies, and what you have now is a mutilated person whose wound you haven't even addressed. And that is a huge injustice. The studies we had from Kenneth Zucker with his greater than 500 patients show that the existence of transgenderism was prevalent if you let these kids go through puberty naturally. It's very important for parents to know little kids can present with extreme gender dysphoria, but that doesn't mean they're all going to grow up to continue to have gender dysphoria. If you look at children, we use a fancy term desistance, but it just means how many of these kids will grow out of it as they've studied it? Anywhere between 61 to 98 percent, depending on the study, so maybe roughly 80, 90 percent of kids will just grow out of it. 15, 20 years. The science of all this is going to be so clear and so laid out, and it will be just like the lobotomy movement. And everyone will be looking back saying, oh, how is this possible? How could this, you know, how savage these people were kind of thing. But until then, there are lives to be rescued. We will know about this in 20 or 30 years, and we will have a population of thousands and thousands of medically damaged human beings, all because of an ideology that's being pushed without any science behind it.